Today I'm going to be taking a quick look at the latest edition of Parrot OS. What is Parrot OS? Well, it's a Debian-based Linux distribution that originally started as a security distribution, a penetration testing distribution. It was really designed for security professionals. It's very similar to something like Kali Linux. In fact, it's very, very similar to Kali Linux. Both are Debian-based Linux distributions and both focused heavily on penetration testing and security tools. And, you know, so these kinds of distributions are not distributions I'm comfortable taking a look at and talking about because I'm not a penetration tester. I, I don't work in that field and I really am not interested in that kind of thing anyway. No, I'm just a regular desktop Linux user. And the great thing about Parrot OS, unlike Kali Linux, Parrot OS actually has two editions. They have a security edition, their, their flagship product, right? They also have a home edition of Parrot OS, which is just for regular Linux desktop users. So that's what I'm going to take a look at today. So I've spun up a quick virtual machine here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through a quick installation of Parrot OS, their home edition, and you can see they're on version 6.1. So I'm going to choose from the boot menu here, try and install. Well, I really like the uh, splash screen here. <laughs> I, I don't know about the glitching effect. I don't know if that, if they meant for that to happen. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I don't know. It's, it's really strange. I don't know if that's an actual bug in the VM or if they wanted that, that little spinning wheel to occasionally glitch out like that. And you can see we boot into our live desktop environment. This is using the Mate desktop environment. And let me go ahead and try to install Parrot OS. There is an icon here on the desktop. So let me go ahead and click on Install Parrot and it launches the familiar Calamaris installer. Now everybody's seen the Calamaris installer before, so I'm just gonna quickly run through this. So the first screen is the language for the installation itself for Calamaris. American English is the default, that's fine. And then for me, I need to choose the central time zone in the US. By default, it was actually trying to select the eastern time zone. Usually Calamaris, I believe, uses geolocation to choose a time zone, so that's unusual that I had to change that. Usually I don't have to change that. Usually Usually it's pretty good at guessing the time zone, but I'm going to go ahead and click next. Uh, keyboard English US is correct, so I'll click next. And then finally, the partitions. Do we want to just erase the disk and you know do the automatic partitioning, let Parrot OS do its thing, or do we want to choose manual partitioning and partition the drive ourselves? For me, I will do the automatic partitioning, and I will choose to swap to file, and then click next. Finally, I need to create a user, so I'm going to call my user DT. We need to set the host name of this computer. I'll call the host name of the computer parrot-vert. And then finally, I need to create a strong and complicated password for my DT user, and then repeat the strong and complicated password. And then finally, do we want to log in automatically without asking for a password? No, that's ticked off by default. I would leave that ticked off. You should always have to enter a password to get into a computer just for privacy reasons. Finally, let's click next. We get a summary here. Location looks good. Keyboard looks good. Partition scheme looks good. I'm going to go ahead and click install. You will notice, by the way, the partition defaults to ButterFS, so that's important to note. Let's go ahead and click install now, and away we go. This portion of the installation process typically takes about five to 10 minutes on my machine. So I'm gonna I'll pause the video, I'll step away, make myself a second cup of coffee, and then I'll be back. And that installation process was very fast. I stepped away to get a cup of joe and I, I probably within five minutes the installation has completed. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that restart now is ticked on here in the Calamaris installer. And then I'm gonna click done because we do have to reboot in order to finish installation. And I'm gonna do that right now. And we come to our login manager. It looks like they're using LightDM as their login manager. So let me go ahead and enter my super secure password. And we log into the Mate desktop environment. And what's really cool is as soon as I log in, I get this little dialog window that says, do we want to check for updates? Yes or no. This ISO is not terribly old, maybe a month or two, but there's still probably some important security updates. There may be security patches to the kernel or to the Firefox web browser, whatever browser they're shipping. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose yes. And let me enter my sudo password. 
and it does look like there were some updates and it's going to take them automatically. I'm glad it didn't ask me yes or no in the terminal because I obviously answered yes or no in the dialog window. So that's nice. It didn't ask for a confirmation a second time. And it does look like some of the updates did include a uh, Linux kernel update as well as there was an update to Firefox as well. And th again, these are probably important security updates. Anytime you install any Linux distribution, the very first thing you should do after installation is go ahead and update the system because chances are there's probably really important security updates that need to be taken. Now guys, this update of the system has been going on for about 10 minutes now. There have been a lot of packages that needed an update. So when I mentioned this thing is based on Debian, clearly it's not based on Debian stable, right? It's uh, using one of the rolling branches, I'm assuming probably Debian testing. So I believe that's what Kali Linux also was based off of was uh, Debian testing. So we're actually going to get a lot of really fresh software. I saw that we were going to get a new kernel. We're going to get one of the uh, six nine series kernels, which is a, a very recent kernel. So it's going to be a much more a bleeding edge kind of software, which for me, I quite like. You guys know I like rolling release distributions. So this update's probably going to take a few more minutes. Once this update has finished, I'm going to reboot the system because there was that kernel update. So it probably will require a reboot and then I'll be back. So I've rebooted the system and let's talk about my first impressions of the desktop environment because I always have to talk about aesthetics. I've got to say this desktop environment, it looks gorgeous. I love the wallpaper. Parrot has always had some fantastic wallpapers. They always have these beautiful Parrot themed wallpapers. I do like the GTK theming and the theming around the Mate desktop environment. Mate, of course, is very retro looking. It's you know, got that GNOME 2 look. So those of you that were first introduced to desktop Linux around 2006 to 2008, you guys were probably very familiar with this setup, this old GNOME 2 style menu system where you have a top panel and a bottom panel at the same time, which these days seems kind of ridiculous because it's kind of a waste of space. You have two panels that essentially can all display the same information. So really, for me, I would maybe suggest the Parrot guys to eventually ditch one of the panels because there's no reason why you need both a top panel and a bottom panel. Just consolidate everything into one panel. But I do like the retro styling of it. For those of you that want a traditional Windows kind of start menu, you have the menu here in the bottom that you know has your traditional menu system that you could go through. For those of you that want the old school GNOME 2 style menu, you have applications, places, and system up here. Applications, of course, is your traditional app menu, kind of very similar to the start menu down here, right? This is where all of your applications are categorized. Places are going to be your file manager bookmarks and system is going to be things where you find like your system preferences and settings and control centers and things like that. We do have some quick launchers here pinned to the top panel. We have our browser, which is Firefox. We also have the Mate terminal, Pluma, which is a plain text editor for the Mate desktop, and we also have is that VS code let me hover over it uh, VS Codium so it's got all the Microsoft telemetry ripped out of it so it's much more uh, privacy respecting so that is VS Codium let's go ahead and launch that and see um, I've never actually used Visual Studio Code so I don't know anything about this particular program but this is Visual Studio Code version 1.91.1 let me go ahead and click OK and we want dark modern for our theming let me go ahead. Mark done. Uh, how about uh, open file? Let me just open something so I can actually see it in action. Let me control H so I can see the hidden files in the file picker. And let's open the bash RC. Let's go ahead and open that. It was asking me for a confirmation. And you can see, you know, it's your typical plain text editor. Although, I mean, we have syntax highlighting. This is more of an IDE. It's more for developers. So this would be, you know, a nice graphical um, alternative to something like Vim or NeoVim. Although I bet they probably have Vim installed on the system as well. Let me go ahead and and get out of VS Codium. I do like the window controls here on the left side of the title bar. For me, I find that much easier to 
deal with because when you open a browser, where are all the buttons in the browser? The forward button, the back button, you know, it's always on the top left, right? So having everything in the top left on your maximized windows, it makes sense. So for me, I think more people, I know originally it was a Mac thing. Mac always did things different. They always put those window uh, decorations on the left hand side, but honestly, Mac got that right. Let's go ahead and launch Firefox and see what version of Firefox we are on. I believe they're using the ESR version of Firefox. I do like the fact that it launches to Parrot's homepage, their website. You can see the operating system for security specialists. And let's go ahead and get into the menu and let's go to help and about Firefox. And yeah, this is Firefox extended support release. So the ESR version and they're on version 128.0 ESR. Let me go ahead and Fill that window. We do have a little widget here in the center of the panel. What are these? This is the processor in use, and this one here is the memory in use, and this is networking. Over here, you have your sys tray, and then of course you have your date and time and calendar. Let's get into the applications menu, and let's just see what is installed. The first category, of course, is the privacy category. Even though this is Parrot OS Home, still privacy and security is, you know, there, there is somewhat of a focus on that. So we do have under the privacy category, we have a subcategory called anonymous surf, and then we have a, a non-surf GUI. I don't know what this particular program is. Let's go ahead and open it. And nothing happened. I don't know if nothing was supposed to happen. <laughs> Maybe it is a non-surf start, a non-surf stop. Oh, if I do start do you want to kill apps and clear cache uh don't kill yeah i don't want to kill anything yeah i have no idea what this program is going to do it wanted a sudo password you know what i better just leave that alone again i don't typically play with this kind of stuff there is a cryptography category of course this is going to be you know, your key signing uh, we have metadata cleaner so this would clean the system i'm assuming it is a terminal program called mat2 let me go ahead and kill that and Close the terminal. Under applications, we have an office category. We have our document viewer, which is Atrial. That's a PDF viewer. And then we have the full LibreOffice suite. So let me go ahead and launch LibreOffice. Let's go ahead and launch LibreOffice Calc, which is the spreadsheet program. And let's go ahead and close the little tip bar there or the tool dialog box there about LibreOffice. Let's see what version we're on. Man, this font is really small inside LibreOffice. Do you guys see this font? I don't think I've ever opened LibreOffice on any distribution with a font that small. I don't know why that's the case here, but this is version 24.2.5.2. Let me go ahead and kill LibreOffice. Also in the menu system, we have an internet category where we have the Chromium web browser, if you prefer to use Chrome rather than Firefox, which Firefox, of course, is the ESR version. We also have the Tor browser for those of you that want to do some, I guess, anonymous browsing. Under graphics, we have Eye of Monte, which is our image viewer. We have GIMP, which is the GNU image manipulation program. This is GIMP 2.10. Let's go ahead and let it launch. Let's go to help and let's go to about. And this is GIMP 2.10.34. Now GIMP is getting very, very close to seeing a 3.0 release very soon. And I'm pretty excited about that. We've been waiting for what seems like forever for version three of GIMP. Back in the menu system, we have a sound and video category. We have Brazero, which is a disk burning utility, which is actually part of the GNOME suite of software. If I go to about, this is Brazero 3.12.3, and you can see it's a simple to use CD burning application for GNOME. Let's close that out. It's a, it's a fine program. I've used Brazero many times to burn CDs and DVDs. It's a good program if you still have the need to burn to disk. We also have Cheese, which is a webcam application. MPV, which is your media player your video player we have sound and vlc which vlc is a more proper multimedia player it supports all your standard multimedia codecs and formats it plays audio video it will play your blu-ray and everything also under applications we have games and we only have one game x board which is a chess game and then we have a programming category where we have genie for a 
text editor slash IDE. I love Genie. This is a fantastic uh, little text editor. You can see Genie 1.38. This is a fast and lightweight IDE. And then we also had under programming VS Codium, which we've already seen because it was pinned to the uh, quick launchers there. We have a systems tools category where we have Bleach Bit, which is a system cleaner. We have Kaja, which is the file uh, manager here, which see what version they're on. This is Kaja 1.26.1. Go ahead and close that out. Also under system tools, we had uh, Decomp Editor, Gparted, which if you're using Parrot OS as a live USB stick, it's good to have Gparted on the system. HTOP is installed. We have our terminal emulator, which is the Mate terminal. And let's go ahead and run HTOP in the Mate terminal. Let's see, what are we using for system resources here? So right now I'm not really doing much on the system, so CPU really should be nearly zero, which it is. And as far as RAM usage, we're using about 600 megabytes of the six gigs of RAM I gave this VM. So that is a very respectable RAM usage. Let me queue to quit out of HTOP. Let me do a uname dash R so we can get the kernel version. Now remember, it's based on Debian testing, so we're gonna have a fresh kernel this is kernel 6.9.7. For comparison on my Arch Linux system, which I'm, I'm running Arco Linux on my main machine here, and I'm using kernel 6.9.8. So very recent kernel, very comparable. If you want to know how many applications are installed, we could do an apt uh, list space dash dash installed. Give it that flag there. And then it spits out everything that is installed line by line. And if you want to, just pipe that command inside WC. So do WC space dash L for a line count. WC is typically the word count program, but dash L means give me a line count rather than a word count. And let's see how many lines of output there are. There are 2,495 lines of output in that command, meaning there are 2,495 packages installed via the apt package manager. Some other things we could investigate as being a security distribution. Let's do a where is UFW. Is UFW installed? Yes. So they do have UFW installed if you want to use a firewall. UFW is the uncomplicated firewall program. Let me also do a where is Pipewire. I'm assuming Pipewire is the audio server. No, it's not. Pipewire is not installed. So that is interesting. Let me do a where is Flatpak. Are there any other uh, package managers installed such as Flatpak? Flatpak is actually installed. And let's see if Snap D is installed for Snap packages. Snaps are not here. So let me go ahead and close out the terminal and get back into the menu system here. And let's go into accessories. Accessories going to be your standard suite of Mate applications such as the archive manager, the calculator, the font viewer. Really nothing to see here. There are two things that do stand out. Both NeoVim and regular Vim are here. So I mentioned, you know, if you're going to have things like VS Codium and also Genie was installed for IDEs, for GUI IDEs. It would make sense to also have terminal-based IDEs like Vim and NeoVim available on the system. So I'm glad to see those there. We have a universal access category with Dasher and Onboard. These are going to be your on-screen keyboards and they're there for accessibility purposes. Now let me right-click on the desktop and let me change desktop background because I do want to see what kind of wallpapers are available on the system because I mentioned Parrot OS has always impressed me with their suite of wallpapers, right? And this collection of wallpapers and, like, and these parrot themed wallpapers are really just amazing. I mean, some of these things are just absolutely gorgeous. And this one was uh, the default wallpaper. This one here, I really liked in years past. Uh, this one here with the parrot that looks like it's, you know, got a stream of color behind it, almost like it's bursting into colored flames. And yeah, these are just, you know, the abstract art pictures are just wonderful. This one here, I remember that one uh, in a review in past years. Yeah, you know, just the parrot wallpapers are just absolutely gorgeous. I do love the default wallpaper, so I'm going to stick with that. And that really is a very quick and cursory look at Parrot OS 6.1, their home edition. Really, you know, not much to it as far as I, I do think it serves a purpose. You get Debian out of the box, right? You get Debian testing, so it's more rolling release. It's not Debian stable. So if you want a Debian testing system, maybe install Parrot OS Home. You get the Calamari's installer, which was dead easy. I hit OK three times and within five minutes, Parrot OS 
was installed for me. And you know, it had a nice suite of software, had beautiful theming. I love the icon set, the GTK theming. I love the wallpapers. Really, this is one of the most polished, professional looking Debian based distributions. I've taken a look at, and I've always thought this, every time I take a look at Parrot OS, I'm really impressed. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch, and Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Timur, and War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Parrot OS Home Edition would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen all these names you're seeing on the screen right now these are all my supporters over on patreon i don't have any corporate sponsors i'm sponsored by you guys the community if you want to see more videos about linux and free and open source software subscribe to distrotube over on patreon peace guys